So that's what seizures are. The question becomes, why do you have seizures? In a newborn baby, unlike in, in the um, rest of the pediatric population, the baby presenting with seizures is most likely to be having a seizure in response to something, meaning something happened to the baby and then I'm reacting to it. So what we call symptomatic seizures. It's a symptom of an event that has happened to the baby. However, in about 10-15% uh, of the time, these babies may be having seizures because of an intrinsic reason, meaning they're predisposed genetically or because of brain malformations, and they are actually starting their epilepsy in the newborn age period rather than later in life. So if you know that good 80-90% of seizures in newborns are because of a symptomatic presentation, this means that the seizure that they're likely to have is not going to be just one or two. It will be repetitive seizures as that brain injury is evolving. And all injuries have a time course of peaking in terms of brain insult and damage of about 48 to 72 hours. So the highest period of seizure onset is the first 36 hours after event. And that is most likely to be ongoing for another uh, 24 to 48 hours after that until the brain swelling and injury starts to subside. And therefore, again, more likely uh, that that patient is going to need an EEG to effectively assess as to whether the patient is still having seizures or not. Again, especially if you've already loaded a seizure medication like phenobarbital, which is the first drug of choice in the newborn period. The other thing to be aware of is because this is a symptomatic seizure that newborns are having, you need to investigate why. That typically involves a brain image of some kind. So a head ultrasound is typically sufficient to be able to look for catastrophic events like um, brain hemorrhages, whether in the ventricles or in the brain itself. It may or may not pick up strokes, which are very common in newborn uh, period. Uh, may also have pick up things that are devastating like herniation, so much brain swelling that the brain is herniating out of the skulls. People, including doctors, pediatricians, don't think that newborn babies can herniate. And it's true, it is harder for a newborn baby to herniate compared to an older child or an adult, but it does not mean that it is not possible. If the injury and swelling is severe enough, even a newborn baby with their open sutures in their skull are still capable of swelling so uh, uh, devastating that they'll herniate out of the skull and then therefore effectively cause devastating brain injury. As a result, you need to investigate as to why some of that, uh, the, dif the differential reasons for why you will have a seizure. Um, you can narrow it just by what age are they presenting in, and how soon after birth are they presenting. So for a term baby that has a birth history of potentially lack of oxygen or blood flow, then you're expecting that seizure to start in the first uh, 36 hours of life to have a clinical history of having difficulties at time of birth. The preemie baby that may have a seizure after you found the large IVH on the head ultrasound is, is someone that, again, may be more likely after two or three days because it's, the IVH is more likely to occur in the first three days and then progress if it, the situation worsens. And so that those seizures in response to that acute IVH is more likely to occur after the second day of life. Um, the baby who completely fine, normal pregnancy, normal delivery, they're in the newborn nursery eating, uh, but they're just jerking on one side of the body, typically the right side, and otherwise looks healthy and fine, and you're wondering what, why they're seizing, that is the baby and the kind of clinical presentation that they have when you have a, what we call a perinatal stroke, a stroke that occurred before birth, Majority of those strokes are on the left side of the brain, 60% of the time. And since the left brain controls the right body, you'll see the twitching on the right side. But because it's just part of one half of a brain, they're not going to look necessarily sick because they're not using that part of the brain yet, and therefore you are not aware that they just suffered a large stroke um, at, at the hours or days before birth. Um, but the only way we realize it is if they actually start seizing. Um, so th they have very different kinds of presentation in terms of age group and what their uh, their birth history and their and their level of awareness and and uh, um, medical acuity that should help you narrow the differential as to what the cause is. But definitely will need an EEG because your first primary um, goal should be to stop the seizure 
because we're concerned that when having a couple seizures may not be a big deal, but having more seizures or having status epilepticus may compound and add to that brain injury. And by minimizing and reducing the seizures uh, with as least amount of drugs possible may help improve their outcome. And so seizure control first, brain imaging for me is second, because whatever has happened has already happened. We can't go backward in time and undo it. The primary goal and the best thing for that patient is to not to have them seize too much and too long.